The Ink and Paint Club podcast is intended for mature audiences. These guys can't go by like three seconds without saying a swear, so, you know, listener discretion is advised. Is it really 2013? I think yep. so. Wow. Sure was. Wow. Gosh, time goes fast. We were young babies. I guess, yeah, because we were still in college. Yeah. Because I remember I was teaching a, a class in college to a bunch of kids and we were playing Frozen music for them. Oh, oh man, that's crazy. I feel old now. Yeah, it's nuts. You're listening to the Ink and Pain Club Podcast, your weekly home for animation reviews and discussions. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ink and Pain Club Podcast for this week. My name is JD, and with me is Matt. I'm Matt. I'm here. Hi. You are. Yeah. And Melanie's here. Hi, guys. My darling wife is here. I'm here. Yeah. She's here. And someone who is not here because he's a grumple puss is Kyle, because he was like, I don't want to watch Frozen 2, and I didn't watch the first one, so meh. I believe the term you're looking for is Rumpelstiltskin. I'm calling them a bitch. Oh, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Yeah, no, I'm calling you out, Kyle. Not that you probably ever listen to this, but whatever. Uh, you probably, I mean, have you heard the show? I wouldn't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's sad and true. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Frozen 2, um, a sequel I kind of saw coming, but at the same time find wholly unnecessary, uh, as a concept, uh, came out this weekend and, uh, we all went and saw it. And so, uh, we're going to we talk about time, it. Yeah. 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 So I wanted to bring <laughs> up that, uh, Disney's no stranger to doing like sequels to their, their movies and stuff like they, mm-hmm. you know, they've done plenty of, uh, directed dvd sequels or, mm. or directed vhs sequels and like you know uh television oh God, shows yeah. and all that yeah so um frozen 2 like being a theatrical sequel is uh i, I looked up a list of like all of disney's uh it's, theatric- only, the, it's only the third one because in the theaters the, well, but it's the first princess. no 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 well yeah the well here i took a list of all like the the sequels or i guess technically semi sequels there was mm-hmm. uh yeah, so Frozen, like the most re- uh, the, and then the one re- right before this was uh, 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 Ralph Breaks the Internet. So that's a more recent yeah. example. But before that, I mean, they were pretty Just spaced so. out. Like the only one that I knew off the top of my head for sure was the uh, the Rescuers Down Under, which was like a was 90s. That, that, that's a, movie. Because Disney has like, remember back in the day, they used to like, this is the 43rd uh, Disney theatrical film. Yeah. They always announce them yeah. like that. And so like, when they did a sequel to Rescuers back in the day, that was like a numbered theatrical release. And that was the only like theatrical sequel they'd done. It's so random that that's the one that... The, yeah, for the longest time, <laughs> that was the weirdest thing. And then they but just... I don't even think the first Rescuers is anything like... Yeah. Memorable. Well, and uh, it's also so many years after the fact, too. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, pretty bizarre. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and then Ralph, that Ralph just recently got a sequel and now Frozen got a sequel. Yeah. So uh, I know I was reading articles about people freaking out because it's like the first Disney princess one to be a sequel, to like theaters. a theatrical yeah. sequel. Yeah, because like the other, like they, I know they did two Cinderella sequels and they did like a Mulan sequel and stuff. Oh, but it was yeah. all it was Those all direct. Were all direct yeah, yeah. Oh my but God, there was Cinderella also ones are bad. I've heard the I've heard the third one is actually good. Our first date though was watching Lion King, Lion King too. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Frozen but there were two. some other. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say that there were other uh, sequels that they did. I mean, not like. I mean, there's there, tons of sequels. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, no, no, no. no. I mean, as far as no, no, no. I mean, as far as the theatrically released ones. Uh, yeah, I think so. because, well, that well, not even counting them. Like, I looked at the list and I was actually surprised. Like, because they're technically anthology films, so I'm not sure. If, it's it it is a sequel, right? I mean, that count. I mean, yeah. like, because they had Fantasia and they had Fantasia 2000. That's oh, a sequel. That's right? true. That's a sequel. They had a uh, they had the the Winnie the, the first Winnie the Pooh movie in the 70s, oh, and then yeah, they had the one true. in 2011. That's technically a sequel. It's not like a a, a mm. story. It's not like a overarching storyline. Yeah, sequel, I don't like Frozen, Frozen sequel two is. is more so just a. Yeah, then, but it's so it's it, still too theatrical. Like mm-hmm. Winnie the Pooh counted in their like theatrical canon. Yeah, and then okay. there was another one that uh, I didn't even know about. Like uh, there was a movie called a uh, Saludos Amigos from 1943, and then they did the the three Cab- one. Yeah, and then so Three Caballeros is I think technically a sequel to that one because I know oh, that. Uh, oh yeah, 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 because uh, it has Jose. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I vaguely remember that. Yeah, because that I, was back, like, Disney did a couple, like, actually story films. I think they did, like, uh, Snow White and Pinocchio, and then they did a couple, like, weird anthology of, movies. Yeah. Um, like, it was those two. Um, I can't remember the other couple off the top of my head. Yo, where's my Song of the South sequel? Oh, <laughs> Disney likes to forget no, that no. with the Black Cauldron. <laughs> Dude, I was looking up, um, speaking to that, I was looking up the other day when I was working on a work of art, I was looking at the centaurs, so I was looking at the centaurs from Fantasia. <laughs> and oh, I saw the black one? Yeah. Horrible, and I never, ever realized it. I used to watch that so much as a kid, and then when I was Googling the centaurs, and it showed it, and I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> the... The, the very it was horrible yeah it was it's, so bad yeah disney needs to do <laughs> I was like, like what the fuck disney needs to do like what warner brothers does with his old cartoons where Just wipe it uh well no Jeez. well well no you know what i think they they have they do do that on disney plus like on disney as far as i've seen they did do that for dumbo where they have a disclaimer up front where it says hey this is made in a different time does not reflect no you art. know what the, no 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 that the actual wording that, is yeah. something the actual wording is something to the effect of it may contain uh, like it doesn't even outright say, wow. oh no, this is this is definitely this is got some old school no. racism in it's it. Like, racism. Well, yeah. well that's well, yeah, because um well I, I took like an animation history class in college and they we watched a lot of uh like old time Warner Brothers cartoons and on the DVD releases they put up a big disclaimer right before you watch it and it's like, hey, yeah, this doesn't cool. reflect what we yeah, see now. Right. We realize this is wrong nowadays, okay. but it is a it is a is a product of its era. I watched a uh, I mean this was like in high school, but it was a, a Looney Tunes thing and I think it was like a baseball one, but when the team lost, they all lined up together and one guy shot himself in the head and killed <laughs> the entire team. Oh my like, God. It was so messed up. Oh. I was like <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh my well, god. Let's talk about something a little happier. All right, then. Um, I don't know. Happy, is it happier? Did we watch the same movie? Because there's some uh, sad, heavy shit in this. It's got yeah, a happy ending. It does, <laughs> but man, there's oh. a bit there. There's a bit in that yeah. middle there. Yeah, but uh, uh, just to just say, we are going to be spoiling all Frozen 2. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't seen it yet, um, now's your chance. On an upbeat note, I was going to say that Frozen 2 did a good job with having black people in the movie. Yeah, Sterling K. It's Brown uh, plays like one of the <gasps> the, the Kings of Guards. Mel, Mel has a, a bit of a thing first. Oh, she watches so, the Sad People show. I'm, I watch This Is Us, but he was also in that O.J. Simpson show. Was he? Yeah, he was. The oh, American Crime Story. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's where he first became a, a thing. Oh. But now he's in like lots of stuff. Yeah. Oh, I was I familiar realize. with him from uh, Black Panther. He's in Black Panther. Black Panther. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, he was. Uh, yeah, he was uh, uh, Killmonger's dad. I think. I have to rewatch Black Panther yeah, now. I'm, I'm pretty I'm, sure. I think I'm, I'm going to look that up I mean, while you're every, talking. Every other sure. major black actor in Hollywood was in that movie. That so. may have been before I started watching this. Stuff, so maybe I didn't know who. Yeah, was maybe. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm just going to say up front. I think I like. I, I might. I might need to watch it again to be sure. I think I like Frozen Two better than the first one. Really? Only I. I like only because I like it shift in tone. Oh, because of how dark it is. No, I, I don't know. It's just like the first one was very almost a paint by numbers uh, princess movie um, and all that. But this one like kind of starts to delve into like some kind of mythology stuff. Um, I like its uh, kind of introduction of like the, the northern native people mm. and kind of like bringing other cultures into it. I thought it, it was really interesting because we had just watched Klaus. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's all about the Scandinavian culture and then Frozen 2 had a bunch of references to it too. And I was like, oh. yeah. Um, so I, I just like, like Frozen two is definitely a different tone than the first movie is a lot more like dark, I guess. Like it talks about like some seriously heavy issues. Right. Cause in the first one, when their parents died, they glossed over it. But in this one, that was like a whole, it's sub-plot. a plot point. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I'm glad that they expanded upon that stuff. And I'm glad that the, the queen finally even like spoke and like not, uh, not even talking I, about yes, like how dude, she actually got some development. The only thing she says is oh, she's so cold. <laughs> like, that's all yeah. she says. Um, <laughs> so me. I want to get this out of the way just because we're talking about the queen. So there's many. Yeah. I, have many I don't mind that they're like, Oh, our mom was part of this Northern tribe culture. 
But when you look at those people, they look like, oh, these are kind of like Eskimo looking people. Um, that is a derogatory term. Is Eskimo derogatory now? It's, it is, in, yeah. it's Inuit. Inuit. Okay. <laughs> she, they look like Inuit, like more native northern tribe people. Their mom is white as hell. <laughs> There's, so, I do not buy for maybe a second. Maybe after she came to Arendelle, it just... No, like, they have, like, completely different facial structures and features and stuff. So, like, I don't buy for a second that she's part of them. Well, so I have a handful of opinions on the mom sub story. Um, one, I wish they would have actually shown in a flashback the mom and dad, like, meeting and her saving him. Oh, and, instead of just showing it in ice sculptures? Just showing them as ice statues, because yeah. to me it was just kind of vague. Um, and if they had literally not explained it to me, I would have been like, oh, all right. Sure. Two, and this is kind of farther into the story, when she's singing and she goes to the island and she's like, oh, my God, it was my mom the whole time. Bum, bum, bum. How? Why? What? Reasons. How? It's like this, the spirit of the mom. It's it's magical. It's magic. It's a world full of magic. <laughs> I was really told that. her. It's like, it's yeah. magic. But, but why was the mom calling to her to begin with, I guess? Like, to So that she could know, like, the, the what she was and where her magic came from. Kind of like, yeah, I mean, why? it was just sort of like. Okay, so my explanation <laughs> for this. Why didn't mom just tell her? My explanation for this is that, um. When the mom saves uh, the king, or the I guess their the dad, dad, the future king, yeah. as as they, because um, they kind of they kind of explain it where it's like the forest deemed that like uh, like a worthy act or something, which is why Arendelle st- okay. was able to stand. But uh, my was- but my I took it as like it imbued the mom with some kind of forest magic, which she then passed on to her kid. But then when she died, she still has that for- like some forest magic in well, her. Well, it made it seem like the mom was magic to begin with because when she was singing, the wind responded to her. Well, she was an adult when she was singing. No. She got she got the for- she got the magic. Remember, because the dad was like, "I heard a voice and someone saved me," and then it showed the mom going, "Oh!" And then the wind well, the, came. Well, the nature people, uh, well, the, the northern people were already kind of in tune with the nature magic. Right. Like, remember yeah. they said they. They they didn't have magic. They just kind of used the magic of the forest. So yeah. maybe they were already like kind of in tune with it. So she could call upon it without being magical herself. But when she saved the dad, the forest deemed that worthy. So imbued her with some magic. And that's why Elsa has ice powers. So that was all like the only thing that proved that was when Anna said, no, it was a gift. You're a gift. Like there was no proof of that actually being a thing. No, <laughs> but I mean... It was Probably. just insinuated, like assumed. Also, why yeah. is ice? Why is ice the master element? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't know. I didn't. If Pokemon didn't, has taught me anything, fire beats ice. I didn't ice think is, about it as necessarily ice being the fifth element. That was obviously Lulu's the fifth element, but uh, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I was just thinking more of along the lines of kind of uh, just Elsa herself, and not so much like the actual. Yeah, like she because um, she was born of. Native and royal. All right. So she herself was Powers. bringing the two together, I guess. The I don't fifth know, element was love. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Fire, it's probably water, it. earth, heart. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, okay, <laughs> so now we're going to so summon Captain Planet. These Did reasons you guys... are why I, wanna, I wanted to watch it again, because I feel like there was so much kind of thrown at me. Um, You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, there, there's a lot of, like, terminology and, like, like, they threw a lot at you. It started off the bat with the dad telling the story of the, the elements, and then we figure out mom was from them, which, again, I wish they would have shown in, like, a flashback or something, or, like, in the water memories when she's in that place. I wish they would have shown her seeing a flashback, I guess. More more than just getting more a nice explanation. explanation. You know what, though? I, I, I liked what they did in regards to that, just because, you know, they, they would have been easy to just do like a straight flashback. But I feel like the way that they presented that information was at least uh, uh, an artistic way of uh, sort of demonstrating. Yes. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm kinda... I just feel like the thing with the mom being of that tribe is more important than what they <sighs> did i guess you know what i mean yeah like, sure. i feel like that was a major plot point that was the whole reason for the story 
Because if that mom hadn't have been of that tribe, we wouldn't have had the story. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then yeah. another oh, and then another thing I was saying was I wish that they were like, oh man, your mom is such and such. That's a really old family in our tribe. Okay, well, where's the old? Where is it? Where's your family? Like, like I was kind of half expecting that old native woman yeah, to be their grandma I was or something. They'd meet grandma, and then they'd be like, "We're not alone." Me. Yeah, I was kind of that. thinking that they're gonna have a actual like relatives somewhere yeah, there. Yeah, cousins and, and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you were you were you were trying to say Sorry, something. Go ahead. No, the, uh, nothing important. But I was, I was reading kind of into the production of the movie, and uh, apparently they, they did cut like uh, a fair share of stuff that was in the original uh, uh, story treatment for this. Mm-hmm. Um, enough so that there's actually cut songs from the movie. So uh, oh, wow. if you so and they're actually they're you can listen to those. They're like on one of the soundtracks. I was listening to them uh, before the review actually, and they're pretty good. Oh, um, yeah, they do, that that, uh, th- those specific songs don't really expand upon any sort of like the lore that we might have missed out on specifically, but it's just more like uh, uh, there's mm-hmm. a song on there that kind of uh, uh, they have like a little line about it in the beginning where, uh, because you remember at the end of the of frozen one, uh, Elsa kind of conjures the, uh, the flurry so that Olaf doesn't melt anymore. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. And then in this movie, it's not there. He's just sort of, he just, just doesn't melt anymore. So there's a whole song about that called the uh, unmeltable me. Oh, <laughs> um, that's hilarious. And then there's, there's another song on there. That's kind of about like uh Christoph's proposal to, uh, to Anna. And like, mm-hmm. uh, I think that's meant to be co- t- towards like the end of the movie. Well, anyway, yeah, mm-hmm. this is all stuff that was cut, and it's uh, it's still like really good music. It's uh, it's really mm-hmm. nice. Um, um, speaking of music, um, I I'm hesitant to say that like I think the music in this movie is better, um, but I think that's a difficult argument. Yeah, it's it's different. Yeah, but the main. Sorry if you heard our dog drinking water in the background. <laughs> um, me coughing. Yeah. Um, I noticed watching this movie, there re- isn't a hook song, uh, like the big standout song. Like all the songs kind of like, they're all fine, but they kind of all meld together where it's like, Let It Go was like the big yeah, like, song that came out. Like they played that shit on the radio. Like not even the pop version; they just played the straight up Adina Menzel version on the radio. I, I kind of assumed "Into the Unknown" was going to be it was yeah, supposed to be I, like the big one. Like, but it happened so early in the movie. It, it's yeah, not, I assume that is supposed to be the big song, but to me, it doesn't I, feel like it's going to have the big cultural mm-hmm. impact that the first movie did. Yeah, it, well, it's going to be no "Let It Go" for sure. Like "Let exactly. It Go" is like a, yeah. You and I talked about it on the way to the theater, where we were like, "It's hard to say that anything will." be as huge as the first one was you know mm-hmm. um because I, I don't know if anyone was expecting the first one to be as, as huge as it was yeah yeah and so um and the whole let it go scene is is iconic like so much that they just redid the entire thing kingdom hearts 3 yeah, that was ridiculous <laughs> that was so funny <laughs> That was ridiculous. I, so much that I was literally I don't want to even happen. take it serious. I, it was it, fucking goofy. I, there. We were watching this entire movie and I was just like thinking in the back of my mind, it's like this would be the best movie ever. If Sora and Goofy are just like just like pop far off in the background somewhere. There was a little Baymax. <laughs> there was a little Baymax. A little Baymax that was adorable. Reference. Yeah, that was cute. Um, but no, I mean, okay, so as far as music goes, I think the music in the first one is so incredible. And I feel like it really brought Disney back to its prime. Mm-hmm. Um, because, and I say this with, a, with much love, you know how much I love Tangled. Mm-hmm. Um, as much as I love Tangled, I don't think the music holds up very well. No, I honestly... I've always held on to that too. That Frozen okay. was definitely a better uh, musical than Tangled was, and, and that's only because Tangled doesn't have nearly as many songs as Frozen either. Like it, it's more yeah, like an I, actual. Uh, yeah, I'd be hard pressed to like tell you a song from Tangled, but I can probably roll off the majority of the Frozen soundtrack. Right, and, and, and I don't even like that movie what, a lot. I think. I think like I think for the first time in forever is an awesome song. Let it go and the reprise is really good. The love is an open door is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I it, don't really care for Olaf's song or yeah. or the uh, he's a fixer upper. I don't really care. Yeah, for there's a couple duds in it, but I feel like the first movie has like so many of these like really earwormy like earwormy. S- like they just like stick in your head um, and like catchy songs that all stand out. But in this one. The songs are good, but I just don't like. And maybe it'll come with time because, like the like we said, with the the first Frozen's been out since 2013. It's had time, right? To and I've, to I've had time to listen to the soundtrack. Exactly. So I, maybe in a year or two, 
I'll be saying the same thing about the first one to the second one that I did the first one where all the songs are like now yeah. uh, like catch ones. But just listening to it, like, I just think it's it's a different kind of tone of music. It's it's a, it's well, a really somber. Undertone. Yeah, it's a very it's a very somber soundtrack this time. Well, yeah, it's all stuff that I won't mind hearing uh, in my retail job for the last like, you know, <laughs> I, so that's the thing is that, yeah, let it, like frozen and let it go it came out in 2013 and you know i don't listen to you know i don't listen to the radio stations that usually playing it but i work a retail job and so i had to be hearing let it go pretty much every day (laughs) since 2013 listen i feel like i feel like if i listen to that song every day i would still belt it out every time like (laughs) i don't even know if that song will ever be old for me yeah but i i do want to i do want to kind of give props to um because I don't remember who did the 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 pop version of Let It Go. That oh, it was uh, Ariana Grande. Oh yeah, but I love that the, I think, the don't quote me on that. Maybe, um, but I love the ones they got to the pop version. Of this one was <laughs> oh like my God. Panic at the Disco and Weezer. Oh my, we yeah, were laughing well. so hard. Just like when they were doing the Into the Unknown song cover, I'm like, is this Fall Out Boy? And then we got to it was Panic. The Disco was like, yeah, close enough. But <laughs> and then like fucking Weezer does like. Uh, uh, Christoph song, which I want to, I I fucking died because it's like a fucking like '80s like Chicago 90, so- yeah. song. <laughs> so like it's an like '80s power ballad music video. It's so <laughs> good. Like, God, why didn't awesome. you just like? It sounds like Chicago's uh, "You're the Inspiration" a little bit. Yeah. So I like. I wanted to Chicago just to sing it. So in this movie, what I will say is they gave Anna of her own solo. And then they gave Christoph his own solo because mm-hmm. in the first one he just sang that little ditty about the reindeer. And then Anna never really had her own. I didn't. I wasn't really crazy about the song she was singing. I didn't think it was. She hers was definitely it's one so sad. It that's definitely one that I don't think is going to stick. Yeah, I, I can't even really like the song that Elsa sang when she was going into the ice cavern. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is awesome. And then the into the unknown song was awesome. And then I'm trying to remember like the very first song. With her singing with Olaf, that was pretty catchy. Yeah, Olaf Olaf's song again is is. Oh, high, I totally is, forgot about is, that. Is highly unnecessary and forgettable. Yeah, um, I think yeah, I hated his song in the first one. Though I just stepping away uh, for, for the songs for a second, I do want to say I love like I I wouldn't really much care for Olaf in the first one because he's just kind of the annoying side right. character. He's just merchandise. <laughs> I, I love Nihilist Olaf. Uh, no, I you know that after. <laughs> No, you know what though? Because uh, I, I can't remember if I already mentioned it in the review. I know I did it beforehand, but I rewatched Frozen and Frozen Fever and Olaf's Frozen Adventure before watching Frozen Two, so I've got the whole you know animated mm-hmm. spectrum of this cover. Yeah, and Matt I, does homework for this show. <laughs> so I I forgot the, the I had never seen the uh, the shorts before. I uh, I. Because Frozen yeah, Fever was like, in, well, Frozen Fever was in front of like uh, the live action Cinderella, and I never watched that, so I didn't see yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's a couple years old now. Olaf's Frozen Adventure was in front of Coco, and I tried to. For a couple yeah. weeks. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I tried to, I tried to avoid it just because, it not long. because I not, well, not because I didn't want to watch it, but just because I didn't want to. I wanted to watch Co- like. I don't know. I, I was maybe a bit sour on the fact that we didn't get a Pixar short in front of a Pixar movie. Yeah. Well, actually, well, actually, on that same note, we didn't get a short in front of this one either. I was kind of hoping because in front of the yeah, first, I was surprised. In front of the first Frozen, we had a Get a Horse, which is probably like one of the best shorts uh, Disney's ever put out. It's I so good. Like it's so great. Uh, and I was hoping we get like another one like that for this. We yeah, didn't, unfortunately. Is. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> so um, I totally forgot like watching rewatching Frozen one because I hadn't seen it since it was in theaters in 2013. That uh, I actually really like uh, Olaf. I think he's like he's he's hilarious and like the actor is what makes Josh Gad is fun. Josh Gad yeah. is hilarious. Like I, I never like, he's probably like I didn't really much care for Be- the Beauty and the Beast live action, but he's probably one of the better parts of that movie. Like um, I I feel like half of what makes Olaf funny is probably like improv by Josh. Oh, it's probably. the delivery. It's the delivery. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Right. Because it's so I mean, unassuming because he's got such a kooky voice and he's such a kooky looking character. And then all of a sudden yeah. he says something so unassuming and you're just like, what? And that's the thing is that because I hadn't rewatched Frozen since I hadn't watched Frozen since 2013 and I've just been seeing his face like in my retail job like forever. since You know, 
for, for so long now that I forgot how much I actually really liked him in the, the first Frozen as a kid. Because, yeah, he's hilarious. And I, I never found him annoying, yeah. like, rewatching like any of this stuff. He's as annoying as you think he's going to be. No, yeah. not at all. Like, and, I, yeah, I, especially I, in Frozen, too. Like, he, he, I definitely just, like the change they made for him this time. Yeah. Made him, like, all existential crisis. I liked existential. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> I thought, okay, so I legit was thinking to myself, Oh, he's all serious now because he's older. Maybe he's just going to die because snowman years are different than human years. And so I was totally expecting him to just, like, become old and die. Oh, God. Um, He's a magic snowman. He's an immortal. Yeah, but that didn't. (laughs) And then he died. He did die. And that was actually And then he came back five minutes later. (laughs) That was really sad because he was like, you're going to have to do this next part on your own. And he wasn't, like, goofy about dying, you know? No, he's very serious about it. Yeah, it was quite straight up. He could he he could have been like LOL, guess I'm melting. But he was honestly just like, I don't think Elsa's doing very good. And yeah, because to- they've done that gag before too. Like when I was really watching, sad. yeah, I think it was they did some melting gags in Frozen One, and then uh, in Olaf's Frozen Adventure, they had some bits of him melting in there too, or like they <laughs> throw him in the bucket and throw him on the outside, and he like yeah, freezes yeah. again. Uh, I wanted to say that specifically, my favorite. Uh, Olaf bits in this movie were him reenacting the events of uh, Frozen <laughs> One. And did you guys <laughs> parents st- died? Did you guys stick around for the uh, post credits? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so he does. He reenacts Frozen Two for uh, all the. All, yeah. All, if all, anyone all this- doesn't sees this, there's after credits. Yeah, and so, but that's the only reference to any of the shorts too, because it's the big. It's a, I think, a snowball is like the big uh, ice monster. Yeah, the no, but then guys. All, no, and then all the little like snowball uh, people they're from uh, Frozen yeah, Fever. Yeah, they're from Frozen Fever. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. So that was pretty fun. It was super cute, and um, well, I think I think aren't those little guys in the Christmas one too? Is there a Christmas uh, short? Yeah, Olaf's Frozen, Frozen Adventures. Adventures. Oh yeah, yeah I don't know. The, I haven't seen him in a while. That's a Christmas one. Uh, I don't rec- actually don't recall. Like I just watched it, like you know, some hours ago, but I don't even recall. They were definitely Frozen Fever for sure. Yeah, um, okay. uh, yeah. But anyway, yeah. So him reenacting the, the pits were like really bad. And the thing was, I can't even <clears throat> remember. Uh, there's a there's a bit. I just loved the guard's were, reaction to everything. <laughs> oh God, yeah. He was like, "Oh, Anna." It's like just reacting. Yeah, it was really. Anna. Lady was like, "What is happening?" <laughs> it was really freaking funny. So, did you guys happen to notice uh, when they reveal that uh, the queen was part of the Nath- uh, the North Olja tribe, uh, and they start that song like when they're doing the chanting? Mm-hmm. Uh, that chanting is the same, uh, like chanting singing that they did in front of the Disney logo oh, yeah. for the first Frozen. Yeah, I was. And they showed I, it again in the. In the it was kind of at the very beginning logo of this one. I, yeah, yeah I remember but it, that being at the front of the first one. Really? Yeah, it's in front of the first movie. Yeah, yeah. and but that's the and thing then at is the that at the very end when she's like, at the very end where she's like, "Oh, love heals," and she's like melting the snow. They played it again. Hmm. Yeah, it's just Brought so weird because room. I'm wondering if they knew. Yeah, ahead of I time. Asked you that too. I so said, I, I asked Mal and I, Mal and I were talking about about like whether or not Disney knew they were going to make a sequel to Frozen, or if some of the ideas had already been discussed. I feel like there could have been some leftover material. Yes, I don't think Disney went into Frozen thinking we're going to make a sequel of it because I don't even think Disney realized how big Frozen was going to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, because I, I mean, like, I they marketed it. Really they marketed well. it because it's like, oh, it's our, it's like our. It's they our. didn't market for uh, Tangled at all. No, but I, I think they knew because like they got a lot of talent behind it. Um, because they actually got like, uh, you know, I think Avenue Q was on Broadway. <laughs> yeah, they got they got the the chick from Wicked, uh, in there. So like they had a lot of talent behind this, but I don't think they really understood like how big Frozen. Like I think they were gonna be like, oh, this will be this will be good, it'll be successful, but like to become a phenomenon for like still going on um i know you have to wonder you have to wonder how much they know ahead of time i mean because they do like pre-screenings and they do like a bunch of test audience mm-hmm. stuff and you have to wonder okay did they know this is going to be big so they plugged all this money into it right um whereas i don't know tangled everyone says tangled's fall was because it had no marketing um hardly like any well i think i think wasn't it partially because uh, like they changed like the tone of it because they're like, oh, well, we don't want to make a princess. We want it to appeal to boys too. So it's like half the reason they changed the, the, well, the they, title. 
But they did that with Frozen as well. That's why like it's called Frozen and not Ice Queen because they're like the boys Queen. don't want to Which be. I want to just put my foot down. I'm tired of Disney and Pixar, and I'm sure other studios do it too. Oh yeah, these animated features with one word titles. I don't know. It drives me up a wall for some reason. Uh, I don't really care. Like I, uh... Pixar's new movies are Onward and Soul. It's like <laughs> I just don't feel like that's like if you have to put those into Google, you're gonna get a lot of different results. But 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 besides your movie, well, the ones really the movies are out. Movies. I'm sure they're gonna Maybe. be the only results that come. They're gonna be it the only, first results to come up. It only bothers me with Tangled because. Like, even the original story is called Rapunzel. Like, it's about Rapunzel. Like, I don't know. Like, with, with Frozen, I don't really care so much because Ice Queen, I don't think, is very popular. Like, everybody knows Rapunzel. Everybody knows the Rapunzel. The Snow Queen. Yeah, like, the no Snow Queen really is not as instantly Queen. recognizable. Yeah. There was a funny yeah. bit in there, uh, if you guys noticed, when the, the young king is like, it was like reading the book and he's like, you know, who are you reading? He's like, oh, it's a new Danish author. And it's assumed to oh, be a. It it's supposed to be Hans, yeah. Oh, it's, that's <laughs> cute. I didn't notice that. <laughs> that's cute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, oh, you were talking about how you were annoyed with all the outfit changes. Okay. okay. They got to sell toys, JD. Thank you. Uh, that's exactly what geez. I said. Okay. Okay, no. I, I am not, <laughs> I am not upset by the costume changes because people change clothes. I think... Uh, Elsa's very drastic design change at the end of the movie where she puts her hair down and uh, gets the new white dress. I think, yes, there's a story reason for it, but I also think there were some executives sitting behind him like, put, giving design notes and like, no, we have to design this a certain way because we need to sell new toys. They and the mold the, of when it. we got out of the theater last night, there were two little girls out in the hallway in princess dresses playing with new Frozen toys. <laughs> Listen, as a little girl who grew up watching Disney princess movies, it is fucking exciting when you see a character in a new outfit. And not just Disney movies, but any animated thing. Like, no, I mean it's the same for boys and stuff exciting. too. I mean, like yeah. anytime like, I see, anytime I see, a Spider Man hat. I was just about to say that. Anytime I ever see Spider Man wearing a new costume, yeah, I, know, I get excited, playing, of like, course. 50. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen to boy stuff. I'm saying that Disney is giant marketing so, corporation. <laughs> okay, so yes, I agree. I'm sure a lot of it has to do with toys, of course. I'm sure it does. Like, toys are great. But I don't think an artist sits down and sketches a story in an outfit specifically with toys in mind. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, what I've said before about this is that, in my opinion... When Elsa changes an outfit, it is a legit, complete <clears throat> reference to her as a person changing. Because in the first one, she goes from wearing a really, like, uptight, you know, barely breathable outfit with her gloves and everything and her hair is up, to freeing herself, literally freeing herself into the to her other dress that she's wearing. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, no, I would say first and foremost, that was definitely their thought process behind doing right. that. Because, I mean, even if it wasn't like a animated film marketed towards children that is, you know, going to be meant to sell toys and stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. you just think of like any like Broadway musical where it has all the same sort of right, yes, stuff exactly. like in the costume changes outfits there. Outfits are fun yeah. and outfits are cool. Yeah. And it's it keeps you excited because when you watch the same thing over and over again, like Rugrats, and they're all in the same thing every single episode, you know, it's kind of tedious with a, a disney movie you know and like with rapunzel she wore the same dress the entire movie that's boring you know hey, she uh, changed her hair though yeah that's, <laughs> Towards the end. that's it she only had like one hair change um well i guess to be fair movies. her hair is kind of like her thing her so can change her hair. Right, yeah but, so it makes sense to change the hair and not the dress really but i guess I but you know what i mean like i'm just saying like ariel had like four different outfit changes like it's just fun to see um, but I truly think with Elsa, especially with her hair, because again, in that first one, the whole, she was literally letting her hair down and freeing herself. And so then with this one, you know, she, now it's all the way down. It's all, it's all out because she has a completely accepted now what she, her purpose in life is. And she's just completely freed herself, like mentally, emotionally. Um, and so I think like when she's in all her white, but also she was in the water. It makes sense to me that her hair's down, 
you know, because when you shower your hair, you have to redo your hair. So that makes sense to me as a woman. Man, like, speaking of the water, though, I man, the effects in this movie are uh, just just going from Frozen One to Frozen Two, just that amount of years yeah. between those two movies. Oh yeah, like, it's amazing like, to see like how how much technology like the like, like the, oh, the visual oh. effects and stuff. Yeah. There was a part in Kristoff's song where they zoomed in really close to him Mm -hmm. and they showed like the pores on his nose. Well, okay, so it's really (laughs) funny like how how deep they can get in with skin texture. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it, um, you can still see that um, they don't have fully uh, modeled noses, like uh, nostrils. Like you could definitely see where the cutoff is. (laughs) Well, I mean, how how, how often are they going to do shit with the nostrils i don't know i know shit enough. Um, but anyway <laughs> i wanted this i wanted to say another reason that i like this movie better than the first one is i definitely like the scenery better like oh, i think cool. like the forest and it's like weird like it's autumn setting was, yeah was no definitely like definitely the like the landscapes and like just the sort of like scenarios that present the characters with and stuff's like because mm-hmm. i mean yeah the first movie is like really pretty much self-contained it's like either arendelle or like the mountains and like the area in between but like mm-hmm. this is like this big sprawling like area with all this like you know the elements say... dancing around and the, the island and stuff it's like super mm-hmm. red it was really pretty it is weird though because like with the first one the whole theme is snow and ice, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I always thought it was really pretty with everything they did, like with her castle and all the snow. And there's a lot of purples and blues. And then it was weird seeing Elsa walk into this, like, warm-colored environment, you know? like She even has, like, a red dress on at one point. That was her nightgown. Well, still, it was, like, a different color. Like it, it was, like, a weird in a more warm color. Well, to me, it was more purple because her it was the color of her eyeshadow. She's mm-hmm. got this purplish eyeshadow, which, by the way, she's like wearing that to sleep. And I was just like, who in the world? Where's that to bed? A Jeez, queen. She's, she's got to look her best at all times. <laughs> Legit. Um, but yeah, the, the, the scenery and environment detail um, has really ramped up mm-hmm. in the last couple of movies. Like... Moana was really great with its scenery, and um, I think it's even gotten better with this. Um, just like the whole scene, uh, like they they showed it showed it in like the first trailer of when Elsa's like trying to run across the ocean, but the waves keep fighting her back. Like mm-hmm. I thought the water detail and that was really yeah. great, and like watching how no matter how much ice she put up, like how much how like watching the ice break in chunks yeah, because of the cool. waves. Um, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, it was a really cool detail to watch. Yeah, I was surprised I how. I was surprised how late that uh, that shows up in the movie too, because that's like uh, one of was it was an interesting thing too, because uh, I think the original trailer for the first movie had a scene that wasn't even in the movie, and then in this one it was a, just a straight up uh, scene they pulled right from it. Uh, yeah. But it was like, yeah, it happened like pretty late in the movie. Like uh, I was pretty, uh, I was, but uh, around that time, I wasn't even thinking, oh, this is not even going to show up like at all. I think it's just something they t- tried to do is like sort of test footage, and they put it in, like mm-hmm. the teaser trailer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Cool was, my my question is the um with the enchanted forest, how huge is it? It seems to span an entire continent because it it leads all the way to the ocean. Well, well I mean, I, I guess well, forests can be that big. Well, I think because they had to go on a pretty long journey, even though it was a montage, uh, to get to the edge of the, the bottom edge of the forest to begin with. Um, so it was pretty far north. So that forest could be uh, could be pretty close to the shoreline. Probably no. Um, I couldn't honestly figure it out. And like then she, because she crosses the ocean to get to Valhalla. I don't know what it was called. And <laughs> like that. Um, but uh, so that was another thing that confused me. Okay, so this, the mom sings that song, and she's like, "Only I know Holland knows." And they say it's a river, but it's not a river. It's an island. She said it, it's a glacier. It's a frozen river. <laughs> that's what she says. How is that a frozen river? Because she says that's what glaciers are. It's an iceberg. The glacier yeah, was it's water tomato, tomato. frozen. That, it makes no sense. That whole me. thing with the island is confusing to me. Yeah. Like I, I was expecting this big, I, I don't know when she got to the island. I, I was like, I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't. <laughs> what we got and it was kind of confusing well i said like i i mean i didn't really know what to, i was very good about not spoiling anything for myself with this movie 
um, because you know whenever they release the books, you can easily read the book and then spoil it for yourself. Yeah, they had the, like um, the, the kids book out like a month or two right. ago. <laughs> so I was really careful about. So I didn't know what to expect, but I will say I was not expecting what we got. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah, I wasn't either. I like, was not expecting. Yeah, this I movie. I was I was kind of went into this kind of expecting more of the same. Uh, like, but I feel like the tonal shift in this. I think really helps set it apart from the first one. Mm -hmm. And like, again, like I said, I I think the new tone makes me like this a little better than the first one. I guess what I was expecting was they're going into the unknown. And I I just assumed it was because there was some kind of issue with magic or some shit. Right. Mm -hmm. So they go there and then I was just expecting them to solve this issue. And and then every, and then the end, Um, I was not expecting Elsa to stop being queen because the entire first movie is about her becoming queen. Um, and I guess become queen. Yeah, I was like not expecting that. I was not really expecting Kristoff to propose, although I guess now thinking about it, that's an obvious. Uh, and I like how they made it a running joke to the entire well, movie. Well, that reminded yeah. me of the Tangled series, <laughs> which I told you. Um, as soon as I started doing that, I was like, okay, now this just seems a little repetitive, Disney. Well, I knew the first time they did it and he failed at first. Yeah. It's like, he's not going to get till till the end of the movie. Well, because, okay, so in the, in the Tangled series, in the first episode of the Tangled series, it's about Punzel's coronation, right? Mm-hmm. And then Eugene's all about, I'm going to propose to her tonight at, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then it was literally the exact same concept to me. Mm-hmm. Like, and then the fact that it's now a reoccurring thing in the show that every time he proposes to Rapunzel, she says no. And then it was a gag in the movie that every time he tries, it didn't. And I was just like, eh, I yeah. feel I a think, little. I think that's more just a a standard like trope that goes yeah, around in a bunch of other so. things. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I've seen a different. Movie. Um, I I but I do like how they how they dealt with it, and I like that um, Kristoff gets a gets a bro. Um, <laughs> Which I I was sitting through the whole movie like why does why does the his, his it's name Dipper is, it is Dipper it's Jason like, Ritter <laughs> it was and then I thought that was funny did I ever mention yeah. to you uh, uh, mm-hmm. not this Halloween but last Halloween I dressed up as Dipper and uh, I, cool. I I included uh, Jason Ritter in the Twitter mention for it and he liked Just my funny. post <laughs> we dressed up as yeah once yeah for Halloween in college and everyone was oh, like right. we go and we were like oh, uh, we didn't think this <laughs> It was cute and adorable. <laughs> it was. Um, I thought it was cute. But yeah. Um, is there anything else you guys want to... Re- I said I was really happy that they didn't do a whole lot of Kristoff speaking Sven. Because I honestly hate that. Well, no, they well because they went the whole they they <laughs> they just had him actually voicing him like in that song. Like, he yeah, they just voiced all the himself for once. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I that was kind of nice that they uh didn't what weren't too heavy on it i guess so yeah it was kind of somber movie i cried like three times i cried um i cried in the scene when like olaf melted and she sang that whole song i cried snapped his fingers and made olaf go away (laughs) (laughs) well (laughs) oh jeez no i cried because some of the lyrics were really like they hit because we've been going through a hard time personally and so some of the lyrics that she was saying connected with me on a personal level. Sure. So I just, I kind of lost it at that. And then um, I cried when Elsa went into the ice cube and saw her mom. And I just thought the animation of the facial expressions in that scene were outstanding. How they showed her like smiling, but crying and like the way they captured how that actually looks like you could feel how she was reacting. I thought that was just really good animation. So I cried during that. Um, I just one other part I cried. I can't remember though. I don't know. Yeah. I'm a I'm a black hearted stone. Yeah, I cried man. like throughout Anna's whole song. <laughs> Tears don't fall for yeah, me. Yeah, I'm a piece of shit. I'm just a no. Piece. You should have seen Toy Story three. Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will say I did well up a little oh bit. The oh, or like Marley and Me. Just shut I've up. I've seen like, that. Oh my god. That I don't want to. Disgusting. I don't need to see a dead dog movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Matt, is there anything you want to uh, mention before uh, you wrap it up? 
Well, I'll just say in regards to Frozen 2, don't let it go to home media before you see it. Go, go uh, see it in the theater. Uh, I, was I was wondering if we'd, we'd get one of those in. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely recommend it. Uh, I, I'm not, I might need to see it one more time to see if I do prefer it to the original or not, but I, it's very good, like just as far as like any recent output from Disney. I mean, I would say oh. yeah, very good. Yeah. What I what I what I said yesterday was how like this movie was so definitely sequel like yeah it, it can't you definitely have to have some kind of knowledge of the you first have movie to watch. watch like I feel like with any of the Toy Stories you could just watch one of them you know what I mean kind like, of I feel like you don't need to, like Toy Story two and three and four I feel like you could just watch them without seeing the first one um, with. You know, I feel like even Mulan, too, it's just kind of, you could just watch it. You know what I mean? Like, but this was so, like, immediate sequel, and there were so many references to the first one, like, all the Hans references. Like, like you have to watch it. it was- <laughs> I like one of the part where Elsa's, like, walking through the giant, like, oh. <laughs> all the pro stat, all, the, all, like, the ice statues of, like, all of, like the past stuff that, ha- that happens as she gets to the part with Hans, she just like, yeah, she just breaks just the shit out of him. <laughs> or when, she's... Like when she walks by herself in her Let It Go outfit, and she's just like, "Oh god," she like, cringes, she's so yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can't just sing it in the background. That was really good. It's like, oh, that was god. good. <laughs> she was like, "Oh, that was a moment." Uh, we all cringe at our at our past selves. Oh uh, man, yeah. So everyone is shipping her now with that honey Mary character they talk for two seconds and they talk like two seconds yeah. i've seen people ship characters with less screen time before I mean, so that's so not that desperate surprising. yeah everyone is so desperate for elsa to be a lesbian but i've said over and over again i swear to god she's just totally asexual i th- i think the biggest sexual revelation that we're missing here is that we know that anna prefers leather that's true she's oh that's right she's, god that's right that's an actual line that telling comes out no, of her like, home is like if there's not some BDSM porn shit of this by the end of the week, I'm going to be disappointed in I you, said, Anna. I said to JD, I was like, totally see Kristoff wanting to be called a piece of shit and get back <laughs> on. Like, I can totally see that. Call me scum. Call me scum, spit on me. <laughs> uh. I can like totally see it. Oh, uh, I don't want to see that, but I know it's going to be there. It doesn't already. <laughs> anyway. Um, I... I think as much as I didn't really care for the first one, because it, I I can recognize it the quality of the first one. It's just not for me. Like I'm not into the the, the princessy movies, like the big Broadway numbers. That just isn't me. Um, but well, you're wrong. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. Um, I would definitely recommend this. Like even if you weren't big on the first one, like me, I think I would recommend this. Um. I, I think the animation quality alone that they put into this is worth seeing. Um, and I, I think the different direction they took the story in was, um, yeah, I, I think at, at least to me, a little more palatable than the first one. Yeah. I was truly not expecting the, the tone of this movie. Mm-hmm. And I liked it. Yeah. I, I like, I like the, like the, the delving into like a new mythology uh, kind of showing like these, yeah, these, these cool. nature spirits um, I don't know, like just that that whole thing, like it 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 really uh, appealed to me, so I liked it. Um, I I still am not going to rank either Frozen's high up on my most favorite Disney movies. I personally like Frozen better than. Mm. Like I I like Moana, I do, but I I didn't really I wasn't too crazy about it. I can go either or. On I, any given day. I, I would probably say I like Moana better than the Frozen's. Yeah, I don't think I'm a very popular opinion when I say that, mm. but <laughs> I think I'd watch Moana only if for more divi- more diverse. But scenery. again, I think the music is better than Moana. I think the music in Frozen is just I think the best. I think the music in Frozen is more memorable than the stuff in Moana. I'll definitely give you that much. Um, so yeah, guys, there you go. Um, let us know uh, what you thought of Frozen 2, um, if you think what, uh, the first or the second one is better. And, uh, honestly, I'd be real surprised if Disney didn't try to shoehorn the Frozen 3. I could see it happening. Give it five years. Where could they possibly go? That didn't stop them before. I I guess Anna and Kristoff get married and have a kid. I just don't know where they could go. Give Di- give Disney some time. They'll figure out a way. They'll make it work. 
they yeah, they made this one work. Yeah, I I didn't know where they'd go with the with the with this one. They'll probably put a few more shorts out in between. And but now I just feel like now Elsa's off in the country on her own. Now on it, and then something will happen. And getting she married. has to come back. I I don't know. I don't know, man. I totally thought that they were going to straight up destroy Arendelle in that flood. <laughs> and then when Elsa saved it last minute, I was like. I was I seriously was like, dude, are they gonna totally destroy Arendelle? And then the tribes are gonna come together and build a new kingdom. Thanks. Yeah. But they didn't do that. <laughs> I was telling Mel last night that this movie would have been ten out of ten. That the when they go and find their Paratrek ship, if they just found the dead bodies. No! <laughs> oh god. Yeah. You know, part of me was kind of expecting that a little like, bit. That I just like if they just had a pair of skeletons in there, oh, I would have fucking bad. died. Like best movie of the year. No! <laughs> <laughs> we, already, man, man. we already we already watched we already watched Olaf die. Let's traumatize the kids some more. Why not? <laughs> Listen, Tarzan showed their parents dead bodies. Exactly. That shit fucked me up. Exactly. Why would you want that? Because kids need to be exposed no! to horror in the world. They showed drowning. <laughs> it was awful. In ice sculpture form. That was terrible. I need proof. <laughs> so sad yeah anyway uh thank you everybody for listening and thank you both for being here today talking about frozen 2 and uh we will catch you all out there next week on the flip side on another episode with something else i actually don't know what we're doing next week but we'll find out together so (laughs) thanks everybody and we'll catch you all next week see you next week Thanks for listening to the Ink and Pink Club podcast. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the show. Join our Discord to chat with us and subscribe to our Patreon for some cool bonuses. Links are in the description. We'll see you next time.